Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be testing out some emulation on the all-new AMD Radeon RX 6400 GPU. When it comes to emulation, of course, the CPU is really going to be the most important part, but when it's time to upscale, the GPU can play a really big role. And I want to see if the new RX 6400 can do our favorite high-end emulators at 4K or even beyond. Obviously, this variant of the 6400 I have here is low profile and single slot. In the past, when it comes to building a small form factor emulation PC, I always recommended the GTX 1650. But the low profile versions of the 1650 for the last couple years have been really expensive. And with the RX 6400, you can actually pick this up for around $150 right now. We've got two video outputs, full size HDMI, full size display port, and there's not much else to look at. It's got an actively cooled heat sink. And when it comes to the specs, it's based on Navi 24, so we've got an RDNA 2 GPU here, 768 stream processors, 12 compute units, 4 gigabytes of GDDR6, it only pulls around 53 watts, so we don't need any extra power at all, it's got a maximum boost frequency up to 2,321 megahertz, and it actually utilizes PCIe 4.0. So as a lot of us already know, and I've already mentioned, the CPU plays the most important part when it comes to emulation. But if you want to do some upscaling, the GPU is going to play a major role, especially with the newer APIs like Vulkan. And sometimes you can have a really powerful CPU like I do in this machine here. We've got the Intel i9-12900K overclocked to 5 gigahertz. Really great CPU, one of the best I've ever tested for emulation. But when it comes to the integrated graphics, it can hardly get out of its own way. So upscaling some of the higher end stuff, especially PS3, is kind of out of the question when it comes to these integrated graphics. And that's where a lower end, cheaper GPU might be able to help out. Before we jump into the testing, I did want to give you a quick rundown on this system. Like I mentioned, we've got that i9-12900K. It's overkill for emulation. We're not going to have a CPU bottleneck with this system. That's really what it comes down to. That's why I wanted to test on this machine. Also got 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is DDR5 running at 6400 megahertz. We've got the built-in Intel 770i GPU and of course the RX 6400. Let's go ahead and jump right into some testing. I'm going to be using this 4K monitor here with no scaling. All the information you need to know is going to be listed on screen. Game details, emulator details, and how well the system's running using Afterburner in the top left hand corner. Alright, so first on the list we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. Dirt 2 here is one of those games that does fluctuate between 30 and 60 while in game, but you can patch it out. But with the RX 6400, I was able to take this up to 10x, which is just maxed out with this emulator. Taking a look at some 3DS emulation using Citra, this uses the OpenGL backend. And with this card, the RX 6400, I was only able to go up to 7x, which is still plenty. I mean, it definitely turns this into a whole different experience. But when I took it up to 4K, it did struggle. It was running at about 50 FPS. The Dolphin emulator's been around for a while now. We can do GameCube and Wii. And going into this, I really didn't expect any issues. And we're at 5K resolution here. So 5120 by 4224. And this is the highest we can go from the settings within Dolphin. So we're at 5K here using the Vulcan back in. And it's looking really good. We've got Automotalista, one of my go-to tests. So originally, I tested Vulkan, looking really great for GameCube. It also works perfectly fine for Wii, but I did kind of want to swap this over to DirectX 11 just to see if it would handle it. And we're also at 5K with Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator. Now this emulator does work well on the new Radeon iGPUs in the 5000 series. And some of these games can go up to 4K, but you know, taking a cheaper GPU like this, especially a low profile and being able to max it out, really makes a difference. So tested some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. I was able to take this up to 4K, not having any issues, and it's really not even maxing out that GPU. We're at about 54, 55% on it, looking really good. And in the past, I've had good luck with lower end NVIDIA GPUs, but not great luck with lower end AMD GPUs. So with RDNA 2, totally possible to take this up to 4K, but I did run into some issues with XEMU. I tested about three games and I kept getting a lot of graphical issues, so, you know, I think it's just a little early for this GPU and this emulator right now. But when it comes to PS2 using PC SX2, looking real good here at 4K resolutions using the DirectX 11 back in. 
I was going to go with the development versions of PCSX2 and try Vulcan out, but it was performing well enough with DirectX 11. Now, it doesn't mean that every single game is going to go to 4K with the RX 6400, because I did run into a couple games where it just wasn't possible to go up to 4K, like Shadow of the Colossus and one of my favorites, Gran Turismo 4. So here's Gran Turismo 4, and I did have to drop this down to their 3K setting, which is uh, 1620p. Still looks really good here for an older PS2 game being upscaled, but this GPU was struggling at 4K. We were in the 50s, I mean it was definitely close, but we just couldn't get full speed with it. So when it comes to PS2 and the RX 6400, there's a lot of games that will perform well at 4K, but some of them you might need to drop it off just a little bit. Moving up to PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, here's Tekken 6 at 4K. Now with the newer versions of RPCS3, it does support FSR and we can turn it on, but this is at a straight 4K resolution. I wanted to see if it would handle it and it's doing a great job. I actually wasn't expecting it to do 4K with this emulator. And even with the harder to emulate stuff, which does require a pretty beefy CPU to run, we're able to take this up to 4K with no issues. We're at about 74% utilization on the GPU, and if you take a look at the CPU, which is that 12900K, we're pulling 150 watts. I mean, this is just a harder game to emulate, and you need a pretty good CPU to do it. Unfortunately, I couldn't get SimU to launch. I'm not exactly sure what was going on with it. I guess it comes down to the newer drivers in this GPU. But one that did work was the Yuzu emulator for Switch. So I tested out Shield, 4K, we got full speed with it. Looking good there with the Vulcan back in. But when I moved over to Odyssey, did run into some issues. So with that one, I had to drop it down to 1440p. At 4K with Odyssey, we were averaging around 51 FPS. It was close, but you know, just taking it down a bit, it does work out well. So when it comes to the new Radeon RX 6400 in emulation, I personally think it's doing a really good job. Most of this stuff was able to be done at 4K resolution. Some we did have to drop off, but that could come down to driver issues right now. It's still a bit early, even for RDNA 2. So maybe down the road, those games that didn't quite perform well at 4K will. But uh, until then, I still think it's going to be a great option for a small form factor emulation build. You didn't see any lower end emulation in this video, but I did go through and I tested some N64. We were able to do 4K using the Moopin core inside of RetroArch, and I also tested out Dreamcast using Redream. Again, over 4K, no problem at all. We've got plenty of power for the lower end games. I'm a huge fan of this card, and if you're interested in checking out the PC gaming performance of this thing, I did create a video, and I will have a few more coming. I got a couple small form factor builds that I wanted to get out of the way with the RX 6400. But, you know, if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.